In this session, we're going to photorealistically render a tree with Thea for Rhino. Thea for Rhino has libraries for trees. If you go to the Thea website to resources, model libraries, you'll find birch trees and another set of Thea trees that are ready um, to download for free in Thea library format. You can use those for this tutorial or you can use what I'm going to use, the XFrog plant library. XFrog is procedural software for generating trees and I'm going to use the Asia library to render a mangrove. Other libraries include SpeedTree, another software for procedurally generating trees that ha also has a large library. We're going to make a rendering like this using Thea. So let's go ahead and start a new session of Rhino and we'll go through this setup. You should have Thea for Rhino installed and see a menu bar a toolbar, and a panel in the sidebar. Let's start by installing the library in the Thea Render menu. Thea Render, Tools, Install Library. I'm going to browse to where I've saved the files and unzip them. If you're going to use Thea's libraries, uh, the free libraries, you'll see Birch Tree 1 and 2, for example, you could pick one to install. I'm going to go to XFrog, XFrog Asia, the Thea format, and install the library there. You would hit OK and continue. This is the lib.thea format for their libraries. Once the library is installed, you'll go to import Thea model on the Thea toolbar. You'll see a list of your libraries. I'm going to browse to Asiastic Mangrove, XROG Asiastic Mangrove, and I'm going to pick one of the models. I'm going to import a proxy for the model, a bounding box in this case. I could also pick a reduced mesh. I'm going to import the bounding box. I'm going to place it at the origin 0, 0, 0 in the command line. Enter. You can keep on placing by left clicking. I'm going to escape to press make just one. And I will preview what this looks like. In the Thea toolbar, I'm going to start the interactive rendering with the play button. And I get a preview. Make perspective full size, and I'm going to improve the render settings using the interactive GPU renderer. So under render settings in the sidebar, I'm going to go to the second tab environment, sun settings, turn on soft shadow, uniform illumination, enable. Then I'm going to, in the command line, open up the ground plane. I'm going to turn it off. This will be for later, so we can easily render an alpha channel, including the roots. I'm going to turn on the sun sun in the command line, turn it on, set it for now and here, and then I'll probably go to lights and turn off the skylight. And I can close that. Now we can run the rendering in the viewport and as the seconds pass, the rendering improves. To see the usage, I can see this is using my CPU and my GPU. I'm going to stop the rendering here in the viewport and use Thea Darkroom instead. Before I go to Thea Darkroom, uh, we want to show you one, two things in the Thea settings under camera. I want to sync the Rhino viewport so that Thea Darkroom will use the resolution of my viewport. Then under render settings, you'll see denoiser. We're going to turn on the denoiser. 
non-local means is built in. Um, optics uses an NVIDIA graphics card if you have it. You can pick either one if you have the graphics card. So in the Thea toolbar, we're going to go open Thea Darkroom, this camera button. And this will open Thea Darkroom. We have our play, stop, open, and save image buttons. This is the interactive renderer and the presentation renderer. I'm going to use the presentation renderer. Render engine, we're going to use Presto. Let's go ahead and play. Start the rendering. It, the rendering is not going to update until a few seconds have passed in present production mode. So there's the start of our rendering. Let's stop it. And improve the settings. So I'm going to add some channels. I'm going to go to channels here under settings. I'm going to add an alpha channel, ambient occlusion, denoising, and global illumination. Now under display settings, I'm going to change the tone mapping to filmic. I'm going to reduce the shadows to maybe something like five. I'm going to increase the ISO to something like 120 to 150. And I'm going to increase the brightness to something like 1.4 or 1.5. 1.4, 1.5, 1 1.3. We can test out the settings until you have what you like. And when you're ready, um, you can hit play again. As the seconds pass and our image updates, the results will improve. I'm going to pause stop this shortly and show you what the channels look like rather than letting the rendering finish. The full rendering may take about 10 minutes at this resolution. We can see that it's using the full CPU, all eight processors, and it's giving moderate usage to the two GPUs. We can see the full CPU usage here. So in the darkroom, about a minute's passed, I'm going to stop the rendering. And in channels, we can see the color channel, RGB, red, green, and blue. Alpha channel is the cutout of the tree. So this is useful if we save this as a PNG that supports transparency, we can use a transparent this with a transparent background in Photoshop. The other channels include ambient occlusion and global illumination. When we're ready to finish, we can save this with the save button and save this as a PNG or a JPEG if we prefer transparency or compression. That's it.